All right. <clears throat> Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, glory, and honor to to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Karkadash. And the Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Bahashem, in the name of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Lashua, Kadash, the Holy Tongue. And Shalom to the uh, elders for preaching the word truthfully and sincerely in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Karkadash. Shalom to the elders out there as well, too. Shalom to the uh, Akiyam, scattered from the four corners of the globe, preaching the word truthfully and sincerely in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Karkadash. Say Shalom to the Akiyam out there. Shalom to the Akwa sisters as well, too, in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Karkadash. Say Shalom. So, out here another day, out here on the highways and hedges, on this uh, October the 18th, Wednesday, 3.08 p.m. And out here on the highways and hedges, and the Wadi Yahweh Hashem El Shaf for giving us the opportunity, the chance to come out here to do so. And this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure about the time diligently in itself, when thou seest the parts of the signs past, which I have told thee before." Right. So we are measuring the time diligently in itself because the Heavenly Father has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel. That's why we are measuring the time diligently in itself. And this is a uh, second Ezra chapter nine and verse two. Then thou shalt understand it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, right? And that's what the heavenly father is visiting this world with these mother like conditions. You know, the tornadoes, the earthquakes, the landslides, the floodings. I believe it was a uh, earthquake over there in the uh, Bay area, like the Northern California. It was a magnitude of a 4.6 earthquake. So we started to see the increasing of these uh, earthquakes in diverse places. Just like that recent earthquake took place yesterday, I believe it was over there in uh, southern uh, Iran. That was a 5.5 magnitude of an earthquake. So we see an uh, we see an increasing uh, signs and glimpses that the Heavenly Father is visiting this earth with these weather-like conditions. You know, like I mentioned again, the tornadoes, the earthquakes, the landslides, the floodings, the famines, the pestilence, the plagues as well too. So He's going to continue to visit this earth now, so more than ever, because He's the true creator he's the true living power which is yahweh of israel which is the uh heavenly father you know that's his true name in ancient paleo hebrew uh yahweh uh, you know this is a uh, second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 3 it says therefore when there shall be seen uh earthquakes and uproars in the people of the world right just like we're seeing these uh uprises and uproars in the people of the world this is what we are seeing and taking place and it's only going to continue to increase you know Second Ezra chapter nine and verse four, it says, "Then thou shalt understand that the Most High speak of these things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, right? From the days that were before thee, even from the beginning." Second Ezra chapter nine and verse Second Ezra chapter nine and verse five, it says, "For like all that is made in a world had a beginning and an end is manifest of these biblical signs that we're uh, continually to see increase in the latter days." You know, that's why we're out here on the highways and hedges prophesying. Uh, about these uh, increasing biblical signs. So the beginning of the end and the end is being manifest. Just like in ancient times took place of these signs, you're going to see it manifest in these modern day times as well too. Because the scripture says there's no new thing under the sun. You know? Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5, for like all that is made in the world had a beginning and an end is manifest. You know? and now if I'm getting to the Matthews, the 24th chapter as well too. And this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 1. And Hamashiach and depart uh, from the temple, and his disciples came unto him for to shew the buildings of the temple. Uh, this is Matthew 24, and verse 2. And Hamashiach said unto them, See not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another, and there shall not be thrown down. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 3. It says, And as he sat in a pump of the Mount of Olives, and the disciples uh, came, right, uh, Salak, let me read that again. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 3, and it reads through the Holy Scripture. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Right, second answer is nine and five that I just read is in the second answer of the night chapter. Hey, the beginning of the end and the end is being manifested in these biblical signs, you know. Hey, just like um, the disciples uh, mentioned privately, spoke to Yahweh Shai privately, you know, 
He says, uh, one shall be these signs coming, and what shall be the sign of thy, of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Yahweh Shai replied to the disciples, and he said, uh, Matthew 24 and verse 4, And Hamashiach answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive him. Right, so we got to take heed to that in modern day times, too, just like the disciples did of our great forefathers during those uh, ancient times, you know. When our Lord and our Savior was on the scene, and they spoke to the, uh, when he had a private meeting with the disciples, you know. And Yahweh Shai told him, said, take heed that no man deceive you. And that's what we're taking heed to in these modern day times as well, too. You know, since we came back to the truth, since we came back of us being the Israelites, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 4. And Hamashiach said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Matthew 24 and verse 5. Uh, Salakia. Matthew 24 and verse 5. For It says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. Right, so that's going to increase in the latter days as well, too. Matthew 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not sure for all these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. And I believe all that in northern, uh, northern uh, Europe. I did a sit-down lesson earlier today before I came out here. Uh, I believe it was the president of, uh, I mean, the prime minister over there, uh, over there in the U.K. He made an announcement that he's going to deploy... Uh, 20,000 soldiers over there in north uh over there in Nor northern europe over there in that area you know so i believe it's going to start uh beginning next year or something like that if i'm not mistaken because i read the article and i didn't sit down and listen to it, you know hey those are signs of uh, wars and wars and wars and then we've seen the latest deployment of uh 2,000 troops are, are are on standby to be deployed over there in the middle east you know with the ongoing tensions between the uh you know, the uh, Israeli Defense Force and the Hamas over there in that area, you know, because they've been blaming one another with that recent airstrike bombing over there, you know. So these are uh, wars and rumors of wars that we are seeing taking place in the world today. So it's only going to continue to increase, you know. And I'm going to read it again for edification's sake. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not trouble for all these things must first come to pass. But the end is not yet, so it's going to continue to increase. That's why the end is not going to be yet, even though it's going to come to pass. But it's going to continue to increase, you know. This is this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse seven. For many shall come in. I mean, Salakia. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse seven. It says, "For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places." Right, earthquakes in diverse places. The famines, the pestilence, the plagues, you know, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. So we're going to continue to see this increase in these uh, modern day times that we are in. You know? This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So these are increasing signs of beginning of sorrows that we are seeing taking place in the world today of these increasing biblical signs, you know, the tornadoes, the earthquakes, the landslides, the floodings soon to come of this uh, technology of this MOTB in order to buy your sale. But this is a, that's a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled. The Revelations 11 and uh, verse 14, that's a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled of the increasing Armageddon that we're getting closer and closer to that in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. And that's in the uh, Joel, the third chapter. You know, we see increasing signs of that. So that shows you that these are the increasing of the signs of the times that we are in. So it's only going to continue to increase of these biblical signs. Just like I've read Matthew 24 and verse 8. It says all these are the beginning of sorrow. So these are the beginning stages of our sorrows. It's only going to continue to increase, especially the category of these biblical signs that we are seeing taking place in the world today. The more we prophesy about these biblical signs, the more we see it comes into full effect right now as we speak. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 9. It says, then they shall live you up, and shall be afflicted, and they shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 10. It says, and then shall be many offended, and they shall betray one another, and they shall hate one another. Right, and that's what we're seeing in, the modern, in these modern day times. Just like in ancient times, we're seeing that transpire into modern day times, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 11. That's, uh, just like the scripture says, uh, Matthew 24, verse 12, and because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax gold. Uh, Second Timothy, chapter 3, and verse 1, also in the latter days, perilous times shall come. So we're living in those times. We're seeing it, uh, we see, we see it in full effect right now as we speak. 
but it's going to increase at an alarming rate like never before. These are the times that we're about to be increasingly uh, entering into of these increasing biblical signs that we're seeing taking place on the planet Earth, you know. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 11. And many, and many false prophets shall rise and deceive, and shall deceive many. Matthew 24 and verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Matthew 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Matthew 24 and verse 14. And it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Right? these increasing of these uh biblical signs that we are seeing in the world today just like uh second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5 the beginning of the end and the end is being manifest of these increasing of these biblical signs and we're going to continue to see that increase you know? and we'll bring out that matthew 24 and verse 37 so you know we're living in the modern days of uh Noah, in the modern days of egypt in the modern days of this uh modern day babylonian uh system this is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 37. It says, uh, But as the days of Noah were, so shall but also the coming of the Son of Man be. And this is uh, Matthew 24, and verse 38. It says, But as in the days they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and, and marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 39. It says, And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken in the one left. I mean, the other left slot. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 21, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Matthew 24 and verse 42 and it reads it says watch therefore for you know not what hour your Lord thy come this is a uh, Matthew 24 and verse 43 it says but know this that if the good man in other house has known what watch known what watch thief would come and would have a watch and would have not suffered this house to be broken up Matthew 24 and verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son the man coming. Matthew 24 and verse 45. It says, Who then is faithful and wise servant who his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? It says, Matthew 24, verse 46, Blessed is he that serveth who his Lord, when he shall come, shall find doom. Matthew 24, and verse 47, Verily I say unto you, that ye shall make him ruler over all goods. Matthew 24, and verse 48, But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord, the delay of his coming, it says, and he shall begin to smite fellow servants to eat and drink with the wine. Matthew 24 and verse 50. The Lord of thy servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in a hour that he is not aware of. It says, and he shall, and he shall cut him asunder and appoint his time portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I mean, this is uh, the book of uh, Luke chapter 17 and verse uh, 28. So that's why the Heavenly Father has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel and continue to be on our watch to the best of our ability. Continue, you know. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17, Joel 2 and 1, you know. And the Heavenly Father has made us a, a watchman unto the house of Israel just like he did the prophets of old. Just like it says in Jeremiah 28, 8, the prophets of old prophesy against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. A Amos 8 and 11 is going to be a modern day famine of the world, just like in ancient times, you know. So, we're out here in modern day times prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. So, it's only going to continue to increase, especially in these modern day signs of the times that we are in. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 17, and verse 28. It says, Likewise, also was in the days of Lot, they eat. They drink, they walk, they sow, they plant, they build. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 29. 
it says, but the same day that Lot went out of SOD of him, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 17, and verse 30. It says, even thus shall be in the day when shall the men select so It says, Luke 17 and 30. It says, even thus shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And it says, uh, Luke 17 and 31, in that day he shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise and not return back. This is the book of uh, Luke chapter 17 and verse 32. It says, remember Lot's wife. Right, so that shows you that we're in the, uh, the modern days of Lot, because you know, Lot's wife turn and look back and she got turned into a pebble of salt and we are in the uh, modern days of uh, Noah as well too you know people were eating and drinking and giving into marriage you know that's why we thank the Heavenly Father for letting us to be a watchman unto the house of Israel you know now if we bring out the uh, Ecclesiastes the third chapter you know like the scripture says in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 but there is a time and season in every purpose under heaven you know? and, you, and this can and this can be be related to modern day times as well too and this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1 to there it says to everything there is a season and a time of every purpose under the heaven ecclesiastic chapter 3 and verse 2 and it reads in a time to be born in a time to die in a time to plant in a time to pluck up that which is planted ecclesiastic chapter 3 and verse 3 in a time to k-i-l-l in a time to heal in a time to break down in a time to build up ecclesiastic chapter 3 and verse 4 in a time to weep, in a time to laugh, in a time to mourn, in a time to dance. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 6, in a time to cast away stones, in a time to gather stones together, in a time to embrace, in a time to refrain from embracing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 6, and it reads, it says a time to get, in a time to lose, in a time to keep, in a time to cast away. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 7, and it reads, a time to rend, in a time to sow, in a time to keep silent, in a time to speak. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 8. In a time of love, in a time of H A T E, in a time of war, in a time of peace. Right? So we're living in the times of war. So we see what's taking place in the world today. Hey, we see in seditions and uprisings and uproars of people in the world. Hey, we're living in the time of H A T E. Hey, Matthew 24, verse 12, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hey, we're definitely living in those times. We're living in the time of war. We're living in the time of H A T E. Then it's going to be sometimes as well too because the heavenly father he's a uh, righteous boundless power but right now as the moment as we speak and we're definitely living in times of war just like i brought out that jeremiah 28 and 8 i referenced that so like uh, the prophets of old prophesied against great countries and great kingdoms of the old evil and a lesson you know and that's what we're doing out here in these modern day times prophesying against uh prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war evil and a pestilence and that's what we're seeing in the world today it's only going to continue to increase in these modern day times. And this is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 8, and it reads, it says, a time of love, and a time of H-A-T-E, and a time of war, and a time of peace. Just like that took place in ancient times, we're seeing that transpire back into uh, modern day times as well, too. Now, if we bring out the Jeremiah 28 and 8. And this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 28 and verse 8. It says, The prophets that have been before thee and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms of war and of evil and of blessings. And this is the prophet Jeremiah, you know. And it says again, The prophets that have been before thee and before thee of old, it says, And before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms of war and of evil and of blessings right war evil and a pestilence is only going to continue to increase just like that took place in ancient times we're going to see that transpire into these modern day times as well too like scripture says ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 there's no new thing under the sun you know which i'm about to bring out as well too even though i've been mentioning that numerous of times every time i've been coming out here so my apology on that salakia right and this is the book of ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9 and it reads it says the thing that has been it is that which is shall be and there shall be done is that what shall be done and there's no new thing under the sun right so there's no new thing under the sun you know 
So just like the prophets of old prophesied against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence, and that's what we're doing in modern day times as well too, prophesying against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. You know, it's going to continue to increase, you know. Now I'm going to get into that Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. And this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 1. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, which is the modern-day Russians, which is Gog and the land of Magog. This is a uh, future prophecy that's about to be fulfilled, you know. And we are living in those times that we, we stand, we start to see it play out, you know. That's why we're seeing the, uh, Russia, the Russia and Ukraine situation heating up. And we see what's taking place over there in the Middle East as well, too. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. Just like the prophets of old prophesied against Gog and the land of Magog, the, uh, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, just like that took place in ancient times. Now we're starting to see that transpire into modern day times as well, too, because we are, we are the uh, descendants of the Heavenly Father. And he has made us watch from the house Israel and made us prophesy against God and land and make up as well too. Just like in ancient times, now you see that transpire into modern day times. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against God and land and make up, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 2. I mean, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 3, and it reads, It says, And thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thy army, horse and horsemen, all the limbs forth with all sorts of armor, even a great company of bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Ezekiel, chapter 38, and verse 5, it says, Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, with all of them with shield and him. Right, because the modern day uh, Persians are the Iranians and the uh, Ethiopia, which is the Kushites, and Libya, which is the Ishmaelites of their armies. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, and verse 5, and it reads It says, Persia, which is the modern day Iranians, it says, Ethiopia, which is the Kushites, and Libya, with all of them, with shield and him. And this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 6, Gomer, which is the modern day Turks. Because I believe the uh, president of uh, Turkey, he made an announcement over there, over there in Iraq and Syria, that he uh, made an announcement to uh, continue in the operation to last for two more years. While you have the uh, ongoing tensions between, uh, uh, while you have the continual increasing uh, ongoing tensions between the uh, Kurdistan army and the uh, uh, Turkish army as well too, over there in the Middle East throughout Iraq and throughout Syria as well too, you know, because you've been having the uh, Turkey, the Turkish armies, they've been having increasing operations over there for quite a, quite a while, you know. And this is the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 6, because the armies of the nations were facing each other during the ancient times, now we're seeing this transpire in some modern day times, you know. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 6, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, Gomer was the modern day Turks, all his bands, the house of Togomor, of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, and verse 7. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee, be thou a guard unto them. Right, so Russia, so Russia is going to be a guard unto these nations. Uh, Turkey, Iran, Ethiopia, and Libya as well, too. So Russia is going to be a guard unto these nations. That's why we're seeing the uh, Russia versus the United States. That's why we're seeing uh, Syria versus the Israeli Defense Force, right along with their allies of, uh, you know, Hamas and uh, the Houthi rebels. Uh, what's that? Uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps and other pro-Iranian groups over there, which is allies with Syria and Russia and all of them going against the IDF and the United States. So all that's going to continue, you know, continue to increase over there in that area, especially with the Russia-Ukraine situation as well, too. And then you had uh, Russia. They recently, uh, I believe, uh, Vladimir Putin has ordered uh, over there in the Mediterranean Sea to deploy more of his military army and troops over there in that area. And I believe it's uh, 
is going to be he's going to uh, he's going to deploy a uh, military uh, uh, military army over there, military uh, navy weaponry over there, and it's deployed with, along with missiles as well too over there in that area. You know, just like Russia just recently, uh, not too long ago, that Sermak two, which is the Satan two missile. You know, so Russia been doing a lot of activity, especially in the year 2023, as I've been mentioning numerous times. Russia recently deployed that surface to surface air missile defense system over there in the India and border region over there in that area as well too. And then a couple of months ago, earlier in this year, you have Russia recently just test a uh, upgradable, a supersonic upgradable uh, missile. And that was sending that warning to the United States of that as well, too. And at the same time, you still have the increasing ongoing tensions between Russia, Russia, Russia and the United States. And then you have them building up alliance between Russia and China as well, too. And you could throw Iran and North Korea in the picture as well, too. You know, so hey, that Ezekiel the thirty-eighth chapter, we start to see it uh, play out. Now, you know, so we're going to continue to see the uh, Russian-Ukraine situation heating up. Uh, the NATO and its armies versus Belarus and Russia as well, too. You know, and we're going to see what's taking place over there in the Middle East because you got the Russian army, the Syrian army, the United States army. You know, you got. Uh, you got Hezbollah, you got the uh, Turkish army over there, the Kurdistan army, the YPG and the PKK, which is pro-Kurdistan uh, army ally factors against the uh, Turkish armies. So you got many different nations of armies over there and different organizations of uh, pro-Iranian uh, and other allies as well too over there in that area. So throughout that whole area of uh, Middle East, it's only going to continue to increase, especially with the uh, 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 Gaza of Hamas, Hezbollah versus the uh, the Israelis. So that's only going to continue to increase, you know. So this Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, is playing now right in front of our eyes, and we're going to continue to see that, you know. And it's being played out the more we prophesy and speak about it, the more we see it come into full effect, and it's playing out right now as we speak, you know. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 9. It says, uh, but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by anybody. Right, so these wars and commotions is only going to continue to increase, and it's going to continue to build up. And that's what we're seeing what's taking place over there in the uh, South China Sea, in the Taiwan Strait. Uh, you have the, uh, I would say, uh, China versus Taiwan, and then you have the United States versus China over Taiwan as China is getting closer and closer to invading Taiwan over there in that area, even though that story kind of got died down a little bit because it's been so much focusing on this Israel-Palestine situation. But, hey, it's still more other wars and escalations and tensions are taking place around the world as well, too, not just only the Israel-Palestine situation, not just only the uh, Russia-Ukraine situation. You know? Hey, we still were seeing what's taking place over there in Kosovo, Serbia, that situation has been taking place throughout the year 2023. The Armenian Azerbaijan situation, that's been uh, back and forth increasing, even though they're currently under this trust ceasefire agreement. But we're going to see how that plays out, even though I mentioned that numerous times. You know, a uh, First Thessalonians 5 and 3 for when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them. Now we're starting to see these protests is calling for a ceasefire. But, you know, that might not be the case right now at the moment. You know, Hey, like I mentioned again, First Thessalonians 5 and 3, but when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction come upon them. You know? Hey, little do they know, Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord, he's a man of war. Hey, sometimes the Lord might calm the tensions down, but he's going to escalate it right back up. Because the Lord, he's a man of war. He's stirring up the minds of these nations to be in that warlike mindset. That's why we see in the continue, uh, continuously seditions and uprisings and uproars in the people world. Nuclear escalations and tensions. One nation rising up against another nation. One nation of armies rising up against another nation of armies. And we're going to continue to see that increasing in these latter days. You know? And not just only in one place. We're going to see this around the world. You know? This is going to be worldwide. And that's what we're seeing. This worldwide of the seditions that uprises and the uproars in the people of the world. Just like it says in 2 Ezra chapter 9 verse 3. The book of Luke 21 and verse 25. Uprises and uproars in the people of the world. And that's what we're seeing. And it's only going to continue to increase, you know. 
this is uh, the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 10. Then say he unto them, nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Right, nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. I'm going to bring out the book of Mark, chapter 3 and verse 24. So we're going to see this increase in the latter days. This is the book of Mark, chapter 3, and verse 24, and it reads the Holy Scriptures. It says, And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Right. Kingdoms being divided against one another, kingdoms rising up against one another. One kingdom rising up against another kingdom. One kingdom of armies of nations rising up against another nation of armies of kingdoms. And that's what we're seeing taking place in these modern day times. And it's only going to continue to increase in these latter days, you know, because these are the uh, increasing of the signs of the time. And this is the book of Mark, chapter 3, and verse 25. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Right, and that's what we're seeing. And it's going to continue to increase, you know. Great divisions between the nations and, and great division between people within their own nation and outside of their nation as well, too. Between the nations and nations of armies, we're seeing that. And it's only going to continue to increase, you know. That's why that Matthew 24 and verse 6 is heating up. Uh, wars and Romans wars. That's what we're seeing taking place in the world today, and it's only going to continue to increase, you know, because these are the increasing of the signs of the times of us out here prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and a pestilence. So the wars, evils, and a pestilence is only going to continue to increase. Oh, now I'm going to bring out that Luke 12 and verse 51. <laughs> And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 51. It says, Suppose ye that I come to send peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Right? And that's what we're seeing throughout the whole planet Earth. A uh, great division of people within their own nations. They battling out against one another, clashing against one another. Citizens going against their leaders, as we see in the uprises and the uproars of people's world. Seditions, uprises, uproars, tensions, escalations. And that's what we're seeing in the world today. And it's only going to continue to increase, you know. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 51. It says, Suppose ye that I come again peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 54. I mean, Luke, chapter 12, and verse 54. Salaki. So this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 52. It says, For from henceforth there shall be five in one house, divided three against two, and two against three. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 53. It says the father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father and the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother in law right against the mother and the mother-in-law against the uh right and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law right so increasing upgrading divisions like i mentioned again between people within their own household within between their own nation you know between their brother their nation, their kings, their kinsmen, you know, and outside of their nation as well, too. And it's going to create a lot of seditions, a lot of uprisings, a lot of escalations, a lot of tensions, a lot of commotion. And that's what we're seeing taking place in the world today. And it's only going to continue to increase. And it's like it says in Luke 12 and 51, think not that I come and send peace on earth, I tell the name, or grant the vision. And that's what's taking place in the world today, increasing our seditions of great divisions. And we're going to continue to see that increase, you know. Even though it might calm down a little bit, but it's going to escalate right back up. And we're definitely for sure we're seeing that in the year 2023. And we're going to continue to see that increase. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 54. It says, And he say also to the people, When ye shall see a cloud rise out of the west straightway, ye shall say, There cometh a shower, so it is. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 55. And when ye shall see the south wind blow, ye shall say, Will there be heat? And it shall come to pass. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 56. It says, Ye hypocrites, ye cannot it says, Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is that ye do not discern this time? Because like it says in Second Chronicles, Second Corinthians 4 4, the God of this world has blinded the minds of people that which not believe. And that's taking place in the world today. A Job 9 and 24, the earth is given to the hands of the wicked, cover the faces of the judges in the world, you know. First Maccabees 3 and 48, he paint the likeness of his image. That false image of Sedgwick worship. 
you know, worshiping this uh, modern day Babylonian system, following the fast and cares of this lifestyle. So that shows you that this is modern day Egypt. This is a uh, modern day Babylon of this system. And this is a uh, modern day Tower of Babel. This is a uh, modern days of Lot. And this is a uh, modern days of Noah as well, too. Like scripture says, they were uh, they were eating and drinking and giving into marriage. Like it says in Luke 12, 56. And I'm going to read it again. This is the book of Luke, chapters 12, and verse 56. It says, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is that ye do not discern this time? Right. And these are the times that we're living in. It's like in ancient times. They didn't take heed to that. It's like uh, days of God. You got hit with fire and brimstone in those days. What took place in ancient Egypt, you know? The modern day uh, you know, fire and brimstones and the, the famines and pestilence of plagues that took in those ancient biblical times. And we're seeing that transpire into these modern day times as well, too. Looks like it says in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2, hey, uh, the heavenly father's only got son should come as a thief in the night, you know? So that's why we're continuously being on our watch. And discerning the times and measure the time diligently in this world too, just like it says in uh, the second Ezra chapter nine and verse one. And we thank the heavenly Father for having of Israel for letting for waking us up in these latter days to give us uh, this opportunity and chance to prophesy and speak and to teach of these important things that's taking place in the world today. You know? And for what do you have about Shemel Shaft for that? You know. And I'm gonna read it over again. I'm gonna start at verse fifty one. Like it says in Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 3 and verse 1, for there's a time in every season and every purpose under the heaven. And we're living in the time of seasons of uh, prophecies that's definitely about to be fulfilled in the uh, modern day times of seasons and every purpose under the heaven of these increasing biblical signs that we're seeing in the world today. And this is what we're out here prophesying about, of these increasing biblical signs and soon to come of these increasing of these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled and come to pass as well too just like it did in ancient times you're going to see it transpired into modern day times as well too and this is the book of luke chapter 12 and verse 51 i'm gonna read it again for application's sake and this is the book of luke chapter 12 and verse 51 it says suppose ye that i come to give peace on earth i tell you nay but rather division this is the book of luke chapter 12 and verse 52 Salaki. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 52. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 53, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, The Father shall be divided against the Son, and the Son against the Father, and the Mother against the Daughter, and the Daughter against the Mother, the Mother-in-Law against her Daughter-in-Law, and the and the uh, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and that, that's what we've been seeing taking place you know increasing of great divisions between people within their own household great division and divided and we're going to see that between outside of their nation as well too you know and outside of their household and outside amongst the other nations we're going to continue to see that increase just like it says in jeremiah uh i mean not jeremiah uh deuteronomy 30 and 7 now we're starting to see these curses uh, affect these other nations as well too because that been highly on us for a very long time you know but we've been having race uh divisions between what we can call what with one another what we're not, you know within our own nation of Israel other respectful 12 tribes from the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom been great divisions uh chaos violence you know and other categories that leads into uh great divisions and uh chaos and commotions that we've been having within our own nation now we're starting to see that take place on these other nations as well, too. So that Deuteronomy 37 is coming to full fruition, just like it did in ancient times. We're seeing that transpire into modern day times as well, too. Because these are the signs of the times that we are hitting. And this is what we are here prophesying about. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 54. Right. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 54. And it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, and and he said also to the people, when ye shall see a cloud rise out of the west straightway, ye shall see the there shall say there shall come a shower, so it is. And this is the book of Luke, chapter twelve and verse fifty-five. It says, and when ye shall see a south wind blow, and ye shall say there shall heat, and it shall come to pass. 
And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, and verse 56, and it reads through all the scriptures. It says, Ye hypocrites, ye can't discern of the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is that you did not discern this time? Right? We thank the Heavenly Father for giving us a discernment and discerning the times of the times that we're living in. That's why we are measuring the time diligently in itself and continue to be on our watch as the Heavenly Father has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel. Sound the alarm, alarm the trumpet of what's taking place with these current events that we're seeing increasing and the uh, events that's about to come in the near future that we're about to enter into as well too. And right along with these major prophecies that's about to be fulfilled, you know. So it's going to be continual increasing of these biblical signs that we're measuring the time and keeping our eye out for and keeping a watch as we are a watchman of the house of Israel, you know, the actual lineage of the Israelites, which is us, you know. Luke 12 and 56, I'm going to read it again. It says, uh, ye hypocrites, ye can't discern of the face of the sky and of the earth. How is that you do not discern this time? And I'm going to bring out 2 Chronicles, 2 Corinthians, uh, Right, Second Corinthians 4 and 4. And we thank the Heavenly Father, Yahweh of Israel, so we can be able to discern these times and wake us up in these latter days, you know. Like it says in the book of Daniel, uh, knowledge shall increase. Then at the same time, we gotta make sure we not get tossed to and fro of different sound winds or doctrines. We gotta have a continual spiritual spiritual eye on that, you know. That's why once again we thank the Heavenly Father, Yahweh of Israel, for letting us wake up in these latter days, you know. So we can be able to know these important things, you know, if we're not rocked back to sleep, you know, of the ways of this modern day Babylonian uh, system, you know. This is a uh, Second Corinthians chapter four and verse four. It says, "In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glories of Hamashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, should shine unto them." Right, and that's the Israelites that's waking up to the fact that we are the Israelites and coming back to the truth. You know, hey, the Heavenly Father shine that light upon us, you know, because he says uh, we, will, we will be the light of the world if we come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father, you know, his righteous path and continue to seek his path. Hey, he should shine that light upon us, you know, have us what's going on in the know and what's taking place in the world today, you know. That's why we thank the Heavenly Father once again for giving us that uh, discernment to discern and have us have discern of the times that we're living in, you know, that spiritual discernment. And that's what we are uh, continuously being in that spirit. May the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, continue to push us forth in that spirit of discernment and measuring the time diligently in as well, too, as we continue to hold on to this truth. You know, may the water Yahweh Hashem Yahweh for that. May Yahweh Hashem Yahweh continue to push us forth and let us remain in this truth. And then that goes for uh, all the elders of our Akiyam as well, too, all of us. That's in this truth, you know. So, Lord willing, you know, because these are the increasing of the signs of the times that we're in, you know. Right, I'm reading again. This is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four, and verse four. It says, "In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of the Mashiach, who is the image of Yahweh, shall shine unto them." And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 56. I'm going to read it again. Ye hypocrites, ye can't discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is that? Ye do not discern this time. You know? Right. So that shows you that we're living in these uh, modern days of Noah. They were eating and drinking and giving into marriage until Noah into the ark, until the flood came and they knew nothing. You know? Of course, that's long as five and two. Hey, Yahweh Shai should come as a thief in the night. And these are the signs of the times that we're living in. That's why the Heavenly Father has been made us a watchman uh, unto the house of Israel. You know? I'm going to bring out that Ezekiel 3 and verse 17. And this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and verse 17. The Son of Man, which is us, we are the descendants of the Heavenly Father, the house of Israel. The Son of Man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, just like the prophets of old was. The Son of Man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words of my mouth and give them warning from me. Right. So the Heavenly Father ordered us to come out here. That the warning that we got from him, that was coming out of his mouth, and ordered us to come out here to warn the Israelites, the actual true descendants of the Israelites, the actual true descendants of the uh, Heavenly Father, the sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. Sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet unto Israel, 
because we are Jerusalem, because we are a representation of Jerusalem, because uh, Jerusalem is a people before us, a place. You know, we got to keep that in mind. You know. And I'm reading again. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 17. It says, Son of men, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, the actual Israelites, not those people over there in the land that claim to be us. You know, because those are, those are, those are imposters over there in that land, you know, because we are the real Israelites according to the Holy Scriptures, you know, and according to the Heavenly Father. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, and verse 17. Son of men, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words at my mouth and give them warning from me. Right, this is the book of Joel. So we're out here giving the, the real actual Israelites that's been scattered among all the nations. Just like it says in Hosea 1 and 10, Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. So we're not just only 12 to 13 percent of the population. That's not true. Hey, we've been scattered among all the nations because we are the dispersed of Judah through the four winds of glory, the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah. And that says in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, 11, verse 13. You know? So we've been scattered among all the nations. This is the book of Joel, chapter uh, 2 and verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, because Zion is Zion 1, which is a monument, because we are a representation of Zion, you know, because we are the actual descendants of the Israelites, you know. This is Joel, chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain, let all the habitations of the land triple, for the day of the Lord coming for is not yet ahead. Right, just like that took place in ancient times. The Israelites, uh, the prophets of old, you know, prophesied against great countries and great kingdoms. They sound the alarm, blow the trumpet, and the Heavenly Father has made them a watchman unto the house of, of, of uh, Israel. Like Scripture says in Amos chapter 3 and verse 7, Surely I will do nothing to reveal his secrets to his servants and prophets, which is us. You know, just like he revealed that to the prophets of old, of our great forefathers. And you see that take place in modern day times as well, too. This is the book of Joel, chapter 2, and verse 1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain, and let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord coming for is nigh at hand. Right, we see an increase of signs of that. That's why the Heavenly Father told us to keep, uh, keep on our, cook that spiritual watch, you know, measure the time biblically in itself, to have a spiritual discernment of the times that we are living in, you know, made us a watchman. Sound the alarm, blow the trumpet, just like the prophets of old did, you know. Tell the truth of Israel, take heed to the promise that we had got from the Heavenly Father without His mouth in order for us to come out here to warn the Israel, sound the alarm, blow the trumpet, and tell them the Israelites what's taking place in the world today and what's about to come in the near future. And we're about to enter into some uh, serious, perilous times in the heaven of the world. Matthew 24 and 21, uh, Matthew 24 and verse 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 28. Jer Jeremiah 30 and 7. Hey, these are the signs of signs that we're about to enter into. So we got to continue to take heed to the words of the Heavenly Father. Come back to the Heavenly Father and turn from our evil wicked ways. Just like it says in Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Which is the Israelites, you know. <clears throat> and this is the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. And it reads, it says, uh, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Right, so we got to seek the Lord now so more than ever. Children of Israel, other respectable 12 tribes of Israel from the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So Romans 13, 11, for now it's high time to wake out of sleep. Children of Israel, the actual Israelites, hey, now is that time, the high time to wake out of sleep. Turn from our evil and wicked ways and come out of the ways of uh, Babylon. Mentally and spiritually, even though we are of the world, but not of it, mentally and spiritually. So we got to come back into the ways of heaven, Father. Come back to our heritage. Come back to who we are as being the actual Israelites. You know? Yahshua Allah, he is the prince of power. The daughters of Zion, the daughters of Sarah. You know, we got to come back into those ways. They uh, peculiar people, you know, the holy set apart people like we once was. The righteous people. And the heaven, Father, want us to come back into those ways, you know. This is the book of uh, Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 7. It says, Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and will, he will have mercy upon him to our God, Yahweh of Israel, for he will abundantly prove. Once we turn from our evil and wicked ways and come back into the ways of righteousness 
in the sight of Yahweh of Israel. And may Adwan Ratasa, may uh, Yahweh of Israel uh, abundantly recruiting us from this evilness and wickedness. And once we come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, because we know we have uh, sin in the sight of the Heavenly Father, just like it says in 1 John 3 and 4. It says, whosoever transgress the law is a sin. And I'll uh, bring that out as well so, since I mentioned it. So it's important that this wants to come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father to turn from our evil and wicked ways, you know. Because we've been glorifying evilness and wickedness for a very long time. And now it's that time to come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father. Come back of us being the Israelites. Come back of us being that whole set of our people like we once were. You know? Come back to being the Israelites, you know. Get get back our nationality, get back our custom, our culture, our customs, and our language, and our heritage. Come back to that, you know. That's why we are out here on highways and hedges, bidding Israel to marriage to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father and turn from our evil and wicked ways. Draw back near to the Heavenly Father, and He'll draw near to you. You know. This is uh first John. I meant to say uh what's it, John three Oh, I'm, I went to John 3 and 14, Salakia. I meant to say uh, 1 John 3 and 4, Salakia. Right, this is uh, 1 John 3. Right, this is uh, 1 John 3. Right, this is uh, 1 John 3 and 4. It says, whosoever commits sin transgress also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Right, so that shows you that the law and statutes and commandments still stands to this day. You know, hey, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, this is the whole duty of men. We fear Yahweh and lose, I mean, Salakia. Uh, just like it says, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, my apology kind of slipped the slip tongue of the words, my apology on that. Just like it says in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, it says, uh, but this is the whole duty of man, fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. So once we come back to the ways of us being the Israelites, of us coming back to the Heavenly Father, come back to the ways of righteousness to the best of our ability, that's why we're out here doing the highways and hedges for personal righteous acts, you know, bidding Israel to marriage and continue to make an calling election sure. As our continued faith and love and trust in the Heavenly Father. That's why we're out here bidding Israel to marriage telling them that they are the Israelites, telling them what's taking place in the world today and what's about to take place in the near future in these uh, times that we're about to enter into, you know. So, hey, so we got to come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father and turn from our evil and wicked ways, just like it says in Isaiah 55 and verse 7 and through verse 6. Now, if we go back to Isaiah 55 and verse 6, it's a lot of yeah, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, and verse 6. It says, uh, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Right, so we got to seek the Lord now, so more than ever. And turn from our evil ways and turn back to the Lord. Draw back near to him. Like scripture says, a just man falling seven times, but he get right back up. And we got to come back into the ways of the heavenly Father and how of Israel, you know. And come back to us being uh, Yahshua Allah, he is the Prince of Power. Come back to being us being his watch. The sons and daughters of the Most High, the children of Israel, the twelve tribes of Israel from the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So this is highly important in the times that we are in, in these modern day times. Just like it says in uh, Romans 13, 11, for now it's high time to wake up sleep. So, hey, now is that time to high time to wake up sleep. The children of Israel, come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father. Come back to your heritage, which was stripped away from you because of our evilness and our uh, disobedience in the sight of the Heavenly Father. If we have kindled a anger in the Lord, that's why he has been scattered us among all the nations. You know, like it says in the book of Luke, uh, the 21st chapter, is that Israel shall be trodden down until the Gentiles be fulfilled. You know, and we are living in those days because the nations over there claiming to be us, you know, they have the file of the Lord's land, you know. So it's important, it's very important for us to come back to the ways of the Heavenly Father. Second Chronicles 7 and 14, you know. We gotta come back into the ways of heaven, Father, and turn from our evil and wicked ways that we've been glorifying for a very long time. So we gotta come out of those ways and come back into the ways of heaven, Father. You know? That's why we're out here uh, fishing for the elect men, uh, uh, making our calling election sure, 
rehearsing the righteous acts and coming back to the ways of the heavenly father you know and that's what we're out here trying to tell the children of Israel to do if they want to take heed to that if not hey rather they hear with fear but if they do try to inquire hey if they have an ear let them hear from it this is the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6 it says seek ye the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near this is the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 7 it says let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him until our God can have for he will among the group right and this is uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 we'll bring that out as well too since I mentioned it and this is the book of 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 and it reads it says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land so Israel is going to be restored once he come back to save the remnant of his own people which is the book of Isaiah 11 11 verse 13 which I'm about to bring out as well too so it's definitely important for the Israelites to come back to the ways of the heavenly father and turn from our evilness and wickedness that we've been glorifying for a very long time in the sight of the heavenly father which the heavenly father don't like that you know that's why he been jacking us up as a nation you know smiting us with madness you know so it's important for us to come back to the ways of the heavenly father and turn from our evil and wicked ways and come back to the ways of righteousness and coming back to us being the Israelites. you know this is the book of isaiah chapter 11 verse uh 11. it says uh and it shall come to pass in that day Saith the Lord, uh, the phone had one now, right? Just like it says in uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, you know, a hey, uh, heavenly father is gonna uh, restore, restore the remnant of his uh, people once he have uh, scattered amongst all the nations, you know. So we've been scattered among all the nations, and still to this day, it says in uh, I believe in the book of Baruch. Uh, the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Yet this day we're still in our captivity, but we've been scattered among all the nations. You know? But the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, which is Hamashiach, the Havashiach, hey, Hamashiach is going to come and uh, save the remnant of his uh, people, which is uh, one third of Israel, and two third is not going to be not so lucky. You know? So that's why Lord willing we be part of that number. Just like it says in uh, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the words of my patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, you know, because we're about to enter into those times of the hour of temptation. That's why in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, and verse uh, 18, of this uh, technology, of this central digital bank currency, of this cash and society, in order to buy your sale. And this is what we're about to enter into, you know. That's why we tell the children of Israel to not, do not take this technology, which is going to be stored in the upper part of your body and the wider part of your body in order to buy your sale. So, Lord willing, I don't want to rock the side that we be not part of that. May Yahweh Bashim and Shad continue to push forth, push forth through us, through us, through our spirit, to not to be conformed to that, not take that. That's why we're out here telling the children of Israel and warning them to not take that in the TV of this technology, of this central digital bank currency, the pushing of this uh, MOTV, of this Karak, of this MARK which is going to be a uh, technology in order for you to buy your seal that they want you to store in your body, the upper part of your body, the right part of your body, in order to buy your seal. So in order to, once that time approaches, in order to go to a grocery store, that the food items that you're trying to get, hey, they're going to, they're going to want you to, uh, they're going to want you to take their CHIP of this uh, rock under this uh, mock, under this BEAST system under this modern day Babylonian economical system in order to buy your sale because this is a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled you know as we get it closer and closer and seeing signs of it you know because this is going to be a new form of uh, currency a new form of way of living that's why they're pushing for this NWO agenda that's why they're pushing for this artificial intelligence but like scripture says Revelation 12 and 12 is the ultimate deceiver you know he has but a short time to move you know that's why he's going to come down with great rappers you know he has short time that's why he's pushing forth this uh MOTV now it's gonna be a lot of people that's not gonna not gonna take that you know and they're gonna rebel against it and that's gonna cause a lot of seditions a lot of uprisings which we are seeing right now 
because not too long ago you had the people over there in Europe, I would say a couple of months ago, you know, they were protesting about uh, them not having that technology to be stored in Europe because this is what they're pushing for. And this is a major prophecy that's about to be fulfilled. Because very soon they're going to make it, uh, it's already here. They just give it, they just wait for it to give it a, a green light to uh, make it mandatory in order for you to maintain yourself in this society because this is going to be a new form of currency because the paper dollar is going to be done away with because this is going to be a new form of currency in order to buy yourself you know so basically your freedom is going to be on the line you know they're going to have full control over you once you take that technology in order to buy yourself you know even though we have cameras through our phones and stuff like that with this uh new technology but this is going to be a new form of way of living you know even though technology always been here, but they've been upgrading to a fact that they want 100% fully control of this uh, CHIP, this uh, technology that they want you to store in your body. Even if you're rich or poor, free or bond, even if you're upper class, middle class, or lower class, in order to buy or sell, you gotta have this technology stored in under this uh, BEAST modern day Babylonian economic system in order to buy or sell. Hey, that's why we're out here to tell the children of this world that they're giving, giving them a heads up, giving them a warning, whether they uh, hear it or bear it. And we're going to continue to prophesy this until the wind. But this is a very important that the Israelites come through this uh, channel and the Israelites come through this message of us out here prophesying. Or if they walk past and they do inquire through this, hey, this is uh, very important for the Israelites to not take that technology that they want you to store in your body in order to buy or sell. The upper part of your body, the higher part of your body, even if you're rich or poor, free or bond to receive a MARK under this BEAST system in order to buy or sell. Because very soon, they're gonna be, uh, they're gonna make it, uh, they're gonna implement, make it implement, to make it mandatory, and they're gonna roll it out. And it's already here, like I mentioned again, once it's mandatory, you know, that's where that Revelations 3 and 10 comes, comes into play, you know, in these modern day times in order to buy or sell. And this is what we're about to enter into, you know, this central digital bank currency, this NWO agenda that they are pushing, 2030 agenda, even though that's seven more years to go. But they start to push that more and more and more in order to buy or sell, because this is going to be a new form of way of living. So that's why we tell the children of Israel about uh, Romans, Romans 13 and 11, for now it's high time to wake up soon. Now is that time, you know. Hey, Isaiah 55 verse 6, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, and turn from our evil and wicked ways. Hey, so with that, hopefully this uh, lesson was uh, edifying. Out here on the highways and hedges on this uh, Wednesday afternoon, October the uh, 18th, 2023. So with that, once again, hopefully this uh, lesson was edifying out here on the highways and hedges. You know, we got uh, yeah, on dude. this uh, modern day Babylon, uh, modern day Egypt, modern day Tower of So once again, hopefully this uh, lesson was edifying out here on the highways and hedges on this uh, Wednesday afternoon, October 18, 2023. So with that, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Karkadash. And the Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh of Israel, and His only begotten Son, which is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Bashwa and the Gosta of the Tongue. Shalom to the uh, elders for preaching the word truthfully and sincerely, in the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem, And I say Shalom to the elders out there, definitely for sure. Shalom to the Akim, scattered in the four corners of the world, for preaching the word truthfully and sincerely as well, too, in the names of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Wakakadash. I say shalom to the Akim out there as well, too. And shalom to the Akwaf sisters as well, too. In the names of Yahweh Hashem and Meshach, Bahashem, and And until next time, I will say shalom, elders, Wahakim, Wahakwaf. Until next time, I will say shalom.